May the Lord richly bless you, yours, and everyone today. Where Jesus is Lord, my name is Sinha Patora, Dr. Diana Brevan of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Let us open up today, amen, in prayer. Lord Jesus, as we gather this day, we ask that you bless those that are delivering your word, especially your very own Sinha Patora, Dr. Diana Brevan. Especially your own, uh, very own Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Brevon. We ask that all of those receiving your word today will, be, will do so with an open heart, Father God. And that your message will be written in their Spirit Man program. We also hold up all of the leadership of Jesus as Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Father God, also a hedge of protection wrapped around them. Also, in Jesus' mighty name, all of your words of utterance to overflow them. Um, also, through the Lord's grace, and build up a hedge of protection wrapped around their life. Father God, I ask of you also um, to place health, healing, wisdom, knowledge. I place a hedge of protection wrapped around all of our families, all of our loved ones today. Father God, this day to years ahead to come, as your blood, Father God, rains down upon each and every one of our family members. Father God, and I'm talking about every one of our family members, from baby all the way on up, Father God, all the way to the end, before you coming for them soon, Father God, in the nombre de Cristo. I praise you, Father God, that your blood shall overflow us in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Tithes and offerings I wanted to share with you. In Matthew chapter 10, 42, Jesus promised, and whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water, in the mighty name of, of a disciple, assuredly I shall say unto you that he shall by no means lose his rewards. When you give unto Jesus' his Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, amen, you are giving a virtual cup of cold water to tens and thousands daily. How, Pastora, do you ask? By enabling Jesus' his Lord Fellowship. World Art International to daily satisfy all of your spiritual thirst in this virtual world of the internet. Where we minister to homes daily throughout the whole world. We also supply all of the needs by posts worldwide. Please consider sending us our, our regular tithe and offering when the Holy Spirit leads each and every one of you. And I am sharing this also to those who are partaking of the Lord's word also in a, in, in a fellowship hall. I am asking you as well, through the Lord's grace, when the Holy Spirit leads you, you know, uh, that you are able to send that in. Amen. May the Lord Jesus richly bless each and every one of you. We do pray that our fellowship does minister to you on Sundays and throughout the whole week, on a daily basis. May the Lord our God bless you. Have the most blessed Jesus-filled day. We are daily available to assist you each and every day. Amen. In every area of your life, through Christ Jesus. Amen. Today's sermon, again, is spoken by your very own Senior Pastor Dr. Diana Bravon. Amen. Um, let us remember also to pray today within ourselves, meaning everyone who is within our hearts today, for every needs in health, in uh, every breakthrough possible, health, happiness, healing, wisdom, knowledge, all of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, for everyone's spiritual well-being and everyone's growth as well. Amen. And for all of the family and loved ones to come closer, closer, nearer, blessed Lord today. 
Amen. This day forward. And when trials and tribulations come their way, they will fall, but they will arise again to keep on going for Christ. Amen. Without fail. Let us lift up all of those that have been called prayer warriors. Every single prayer warrior. Amen. That they may have the Lord's strength as they pray. That a hedge of protection may surround them and all family members. Amen. Let us also pray for the needs of every local church, including the needs of Jesus as Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Let us ask the Lord our God for every provision so that his church may be able to continue the work that he has set aside for it. Let us also pray for those that have been called to leadership in his church that they may have strength and a godly vision at all times. Let us place a hedge of protection wrapped around every leadership and all families so that they may be shielded from every help situation. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray for those as well who are completely shut in that comes faithfully to the throne room of grace and receives the word from us every, every single day and every week. And everyone who is even fellowshipping with the Lord in a, in a church building, you know, in, in, a, in, in, in the world outside, through the Lord's grace that is not shut in, through the Lord's grace. I wanted to share with you that our GPA Bible studies is available for everyone, not just for those of, of, of certain. No. Our GPA studies, you want to get deep inside the Gospels? Come on, send us in your request. Send us in and, and let us know that you would like to join us through the Lord's grace. You will receive so you will be able to study to show yourself approved and receive at the end of each year your GPA certification Bible studies. Amen. Your grades, your certification is okay and on its way. Amen. We welcome today all of the national and all the international fellowship members and visitors around the globe as you receive the spiritual nutrition of the Lord's Word. May the Lord richly bless you today around the globe. My name is Senior Patora, Dr. Deanna Bravon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship. Let us prepare today and open up your Bibles to Mark chapter 2 verses 1 to 5. This is week 2 of your very own Dr. Deanna Brevon series, Breakthrough. Amen? Are you ready? Is everyone ready uh, with Mark chapter 2 verses 1 to 5? Many of you already have this highlighted already in your Bibles and, and underlined. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not even come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven of thee. In creating your personal breakthrough, folks. Amen. In part one, we have talked about Jesus being in the crowded house in Capernaum with so many people listening to him that you could not even get inside the door. And then there was a, a paraplegic man, a paralytic man, 
who could not even walk on his own, and four of his friends carried him into the house. They tore off a portion of the roof, and they got him in where, where Jesus was. The four men, they realized that for the man to get his healing, that they that he needed to be more than just in the vicinity of Jesus. So they took him up close. And many are content to, to just be in the vicinity. But we must desire to get up close to where the master does his work within us. Amen? Getting up close has its challenges. With so much in our lives pulling for us constantly and constantly. But it is possible, folks, where there's a determination to be close to Jesus. It will become reality because he honors and he takes notice when we get serious about living for the Lord our God. Tearing off the shingles of self-satisfaction and the torpor of turmoil and the decking for deliverance and the attic for accomplishment is all a part of your process walk with Christ. Finally, you get down to, to the sheet rock ceiling. Amen? That's with our modern roof systems. And back then, back then, folks, they had batch roofs. We all must press through self-preservation. Amen? Realizing that being internally healthy is more important than just looking good on the outside. This guy, he was far beyond all of that. He was way far beyond all of that. They uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let it down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. I want us to notice something here today very interesting thing about this the four friends who are doing the work for this paralyzed man they had their faith involved it's impossible to be a blessing without a blessing also splashing over over on you as well folks and then it's impossible. It's very impossible for for that for uh oh, excuse me. It's impossible to be a blessing without that blessing splashing all over you folks. It's impossible to build up somebody's faith without it also building up upon your own. I can imagine what the faces of these four men must have looked like when their eyes met Jesus as they peered down through the roof. It was as, as that point that he saw their faith. Understanding what was happening here, we can say that if this man had just remained out of the front, far away from Jesus, but Jesus being inside in that crowded house that he couldn't even see that man or his needs. We must remember that God purposely limited himself of knowledge and ability when he robbed himself in the flesh. He had to do it to become a spotless lamb just as you and just as I. This man's needs, folks, it was so out of sight. And unless he got some help from somebody, he was to remain helpless. Unless God chose to act upon his all-knowing ability. And Jesus was not even going to, to go out in front of the yard. It's not still true today. Is that not still true today, folks? Is it? 
that the Lord requires some action of us to get our blessings. Even if that action requires us to call for help, the Lord honors our efforts to please Him. And if you need help, folks, ask, seek, and knock. But by all means, please don't just settle for your situation because God has something better in store for you. Just don't sit there and focus on your situation. The Lord our God has something greater in store for you. He has a miracle in store for you. Amen? And when these men go to great lengths to drop this man down in front of Jesus by the rope, he says, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. This may not seem like the right thing to say because this man needs a physical healing. And if there's sin issue, you cannot even tell just by looking at him in the natural. Amen? To those present, his need was a physical in nature. Why didn't Jesus even start there? as he often did in the past. Why? In verse 6, let's go back to verse 6, amen? Verse 6, it begins to give us the answer. That there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. The scribes, folks, were those who wrote down the scriptures. They were extremely meticulous men who were charged with the task of faithfully transcribing the word of God. They were so respectful of it that they wouldn't even spell God. They wouldn't even write the name of God down. They would write Yahweh. In its Hebrew form. And this later was translated into Jehovah in the Hebrew form. And they added vowels between consonants to make a word so that you could pronounce which became Jehovah. These were religious men. But they were dedicated to their task, folks. And they were in Jesus' meetings. Where were they reasoning? Where were they reasoning? They were reasoning in their hearts, folks. Which tells us that it's not even verbalized. That people could not even hear what they were thinking. Why does this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only. And immediately. When Jesus perceived in his spirit. That they so reasoned with themselves. He said unto them. Why reason ye these things in your hearts. Please underline that in your word. Amen. Verses 7 to 8 that I just read to you. Folks. A study of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's very interesting. God has given us the supernatural ability to move in on realms that man alone cannot, can never take us. We can't even know people the way that we really need to know them. Just simply according to their outward and surface stuff that, that, that we see. Amen? And if that were the case, then actors and musical stars, they would be saved according to their charm and their good looks. Amen? But we know that that is not the case. I would rather be, be temporarily lonely than eternally lost. Let me repeat that one more time. 
I would rather be temporarily lonely than eternally lost. We must become discerning people, folks. People who who can can discern by the by the spirit of the Lord our God. And if you really want to know what people are reasoning in their hearts, then perceive by the Spirit. Now, Jesus is going to ask the scribes a question, as well as make a statement here, along with the positive proof, all to build their faith in God. Amen? Let's go into verse 9. Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins have been forgiven thee. Or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. What's the answer to this question, folks? What's the answer to this question? Why did Jesus ask the question? Why did Jesus ask the question? We must understand that on the cross, when he paid for our salvation, he not only paid the price for our souls, eternal salvation, but also for our physical healing and spiritual health and our spiritual wealth on this earth until we get to the glory. The crucifixion of Jesus and the ransom that he paid and what you get with your breakthrough it's not the situation where you have have to choose between either the well-being of your body or the health of your of your soul. Jesus paid the price for the health of both. And we all can have both. Are you living in the total health that God has provided for you? We must recognize that Jesus did something here that we cannot do. Jesus forgave this man's sin. We cannot forgive like God can. Do you see where, where I'm going to now? Amen? By forgiving sin, Jesus was claiming duty. The scribes and Pharisees were smart enough to know this. And we cannot forgive sin. But we can forgive one another. This is very vital in your Christian walk with Christ. It is forgiveness. Verse 11. Let's go into verse 11 and read verse 11. I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth in, uh, before them all insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified. God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. They weren't even talking about New York fashion, folks, either. They were talking about the fashion or the way in which the Lord did this. It was glorious and marvelous. This is what comes with our breakthrough, folks. Everybody they got to see this guy's miracle. And it caused amazement, which needs to be translated into a journey of seeking God. And it also caused the real reason they glorified God. Hallelujah. They never had seen anything like this before. But God has a miracle for you, folks. For you, for you, and for you. And the results of that personal miracle, they're going to come to bless you. And then your family and everyone that has breath that you want to see come to God. Everyone that you've been praying to come closer to the Lord your God. And they said, we never saw it on this fashion. One of the things 
that breakthrough does, folks, is that it removes the blindness and allows you to see just like you have never seen before. And when we really begin to understand the light of His glory, His magnificence and knowledge and wonder, it is humbling experience. And let me tell you that again. It is a humbling experience. The wrong thing for us to do is to get lifted up in ourself. In ourselves. We need to understand that God wants to do some things for us. And break us through to a place where our testimony can be. Amen? I never saw like this. And if it was so dark in here today that I could not see, more than likely I would trip over some things on this platform that would not even mean that I was mentally retired at glory to God, but just that I could not see. And then we all need to, to, to see better than we have been seeing in the realm of the supernatural. Amen. We cannot even ever decide just who it is that Jesus will save, who Jesus will deliver. Who Jesus will touch. We must come to the realization that witnessing is much more than just something that we do. Amen. We must go beyond that and we must be witnesses. I pray that the Lord will grant a personal breakthrough for everyone here today. And when we understand that the fact that Jesus Christ is the great I am in how he relates to us personally it makes all the difference in the world folks before David became king of Judah folks and Israel he was in a great battle and David cried out to the Lord and the Lord answered him God gave David a breakthrough that blessed him for the rest of his life and David even messed up royally. But God's mercies and blessings, they were still with him in many ways. So you cannot even go wrong pursuing your personal breakthrough. And I want to encourage you here today. Don't make the Lord do it all. Amen? Because he's not going to do it at all. And if you wait until God does it all, you're going to be waiting a very, very long time. But he giveth more grace, folks. And then he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God res resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify <coughs> excuse me, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Folks, I call upon you here today to come prepare all of your prayer needs. Come before the Lord. Please send it in today. Amen. Send in your prayer needs. Send in to us your celebration of praises of what the Lord has done. Not only yours but whoever is in, within your heart today. Amen. Amen. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Amen. My name is Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Bravon of Jesus' Lord Fellowship. We are a life-changing ministry. 
worldwide, folks. Amen. A going ministry and a growing ministry and a praying ministry. This is a growing ministry, a ministry that brings you the results. Amen. Uh, please, anybody who has any prayer needs or prayer requests, please send it into headquarters, J I L F W W I at yahoo.com. Amen. We are here to bring encouragement your way. We are here to, to bring you the, your, your weekly sermon teachings, your daily devotionals from me and teachings from Deacon Matthew. We are here for all of your prayer needs 24-7, seven days a week. Amen. So please send it in. All of your prayer requests, all of your celebration and praises, we keep in a, a, a Bible journal through the Lord's grace. And, and through the Lord's grace, I anoint you each and every brand new day without fail. Even if I don't hear from you, you are anointed. Amen. Um, please come visit us and also join our yearly Bible studies. Amen. I'm really excited about, about, this, about the beginning of this year and the book of Mark. On uh, Monday... Monday, the 12th, we will be going right into Mark chapter 10, part 2. Amen. Uh, the midweek service will be on this, on the 14th, on midweek, on, in, on Wednesday, of course. Amen. God bless you. I look forward from, to hearing from each and every one of you where Jesus is Lord.